Um, I was going to say unpopular opinion. Mm-hmm. I do feel that sometimes when we have insecure attachment styles um, and you jump into relationships without actually working on it, then it just makes it worse because it continues to be triggered. Because for me, within that time, it's almost like I revel in just overthinking and mm-hmm. thoughts and thoughts. So by the time you do come to me, oh, I'm gone. I'm a lost <laughs> case. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know how best you would advise a sister. Hello, my beautiful friends. I trust you are well. Welcome to another episode of Asking for a Friend brought to you exclusively here on the SNS. Prior to beginning, we'd like to express our gratitude to Longonot Place for providing us with their serviced apartments as a shoot location. They are situated off Harithuku Road and are ideal for individuals who are seeking long-term and or short-term accommodation. For more information, feel free to check the description box down below. Now, Asking for a Friend is a very fun and engaging segment where ideally we appeal to our audience to send us their dilemmas and myself and guests, we respond to their dilemmas and provide our advice and two cents. However, today we have a bit of a switcheroo. We shall be having two lovely therapists who I will allow themselves to introduce. Oh, okay. (laughs) So my name is Wendy Mazeka. I'm a psychotherapist. I'm also a wellness coach specifically Mm -hmm. for women. So Mm -hmm. I don't see men. Okay. Um, I'm also like a half-baked content creator. Just (laughs) (laughs) absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also a co-founder at Mm -hmm. a. Kenyan made um, app. We're mm-hmm. a wellness tech, um, helping people take better care of themselves. And just a level of fun things like Harry Potter and notebooks. That might not be fun, but it's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's wow. basically Love that for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm Melissa Kyoko. Mm-hmm. I am also a psychologist. So I have my private practice and I also work at a government clinic where I'm also a psychologist. So yeah, I guess I'm a full-time psychologist, mm-hmm. but I also have a fashion line mm-hmm. where I design clothes. Um, I'm a lover of tea, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I, I drink like an insane amount of herbal teas in a day. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and very half-baked or like quarter-baked content creator. So I'm also a psychoeducator <laughs> on mm-hmm. uh, social media as well. Wow. Yeah. Women of many talents. <laughs> Absolutely love, love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> so... Are we ready for these dilemmas? We are, but Mm -hmm. I think we need to give a disclaimer. Absolutely. So this is not a therapy dupe. Please go to therapy. Um, (laughs) We'll just give you like our insight and everything, but like definitely go to therapy. Also, we're open to seeing new clients. So So reach out. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. They are professional expert advice. So dilemma number one. Any tips for people with avoidant attachment styles? I sometimes feel stuck in an endless loop of trying to fight the thoughts that I am not deserving of love and accepting it. I self-sabotage most, if not all, of my relationships, and I always begin with the end in mind, like breakups in future. Please help. Oh, I start. (laughs) Whoever whoever wants to take it Um, away. So I think since, first of all, they're aware that they have an avoidant attachment style, I Mm -hmm. think the next best thing to do is like inner child work, right? Mm -hmm. So inner child work is when you go back to your childhood experiences and really understand even just how you were parented, Mm -hmm. um, how you were nurtured in order to actually now start to develop a secure attachment style. Mm -hmm. Then... Um, and Sorry, Sorry, Melissa, before Sorry. you proceed, um, <laughs> and you know, before the, we, we jump on this bandwagon, could you clarify to us how many attachment styles there are, what they are, what they look like? Yeah. Okay, so there's three, but people call them four, right? Okay. But yeah. the general classification is secure and insecure attachment. Mm-hmm. Um, so a secure attachment um, form is when your parents met all your needs and you were properly nurtured and everything. Okay. And then all the others now are called insecure. Mm-hmm. So we have an anxious, um, preoccupied attachment style. Mm-hmm. Then we have the avoidant attachment style. Mm-hmm. Then disorganized. The disorganized yes. or fearful, fearful avoidant. avoidant. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So. Yes, you were saying something before <laughs> I cut you short. Yeah, so um, I was going to say unpopular opinion. Mm-hmm. I do feel that sometimes when we have insecure attachment styles, um, and you jump into relationships without actually working on it, then it just makes it worse because it continues to be triggered. So I 
also just because I'm a therapist, I'm always like, just work on it in therapy, work on your childhood trauma, work on the relationship with yourself, feel mm-hmm. very secure in yourself um, before you feel like you, you're ready to like jump into a relationship. Okay, Wendy? Yeah, I think what Melissa has said is very, very spot on. Mm-hmm. But also, like, let's say you, you have done the work and you're continuing to do the work. Mm-hmm. Um, I think your avoidant attachment can be triggered in more than just your romantic relationships. Okay. It could be triggered in friendships. It mm-hmm. could be triggered in family situations. So that doesn't mean isolate yourself until mm-hmm. you've completely healed your avoidant attachment style. Mm-hmm. So some of the things that I feel like are really helpful is just like, one, exploring in therapy, like Melissa has said, but also reminding yourself, reminding yourself that your thoughts are not always real. Okay. Sometimes they're just thoughts, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So if you're having a thought like, um, if I communicate how I feel, this person is going to feel like I'm too much and they're going to leave, mm-hmm. right? Reframe that thought and try and think about, are there other times that I've communicated how I felt and people didn't leave? Mm. right Mm -hmm. and then you know just try and put that in your head that okay there's a time that i've ever communicated my needs and this person didn't leave so just trying to rewire how you think about situations because turns out most of the time they're not true but they are valid the feelings that you're Mm -hmm. having are valid the feelings of running away and also when you're having let's say you're having a heated moment right and you're feeling your avoidant um, attachment style is being triggered and you're feeling like running away it's okay to take the time that you need, but communicate that with whoever you are, you're having that conflict with, right? Mm-hmm. Communicate that I need some time, but I can come back to it later. So I think, yeah, with avoidant mm-hmm. attachment, it's very, you need that time. So it's okay to have it, but make sure you come back to it and communicate. Yeah, and just um, on the communication, I think it's also important to communicate your fears with any attachment style. Just communicating that I am feeling insecure in this relationship right now or I am feeling like I want to run. Once you're able to communicate and once someone understands that maybe this is just like a phase that you're going through and you need more reassurance and everything, then that also helps heal it. Because a lot of times um, it's not only you who can do the work, but also the people around you and the people who love you can affirm you and get you to a point of feeling secure as well. So just communicating where you're at. Okay. Yeah, and on that point on... (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. I love how you're bouncing off each other. (laughs) Um, On that point of communication, just shameless plug, I have um, a couple of tips on open and honest communication you can find on my website and you can also find like small, small bite-sized pieces on my Instagram description box. We will plug you guys. But yeah, um, I think that's it. Communication. Communication. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, You mentioned something about uh, taking the time off and being able to communicate that. For me, I think this is now where my personal dilemma is. In the beginning. Um, So I've always struggled with compartmentalizing, Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to areas of conflict, where I'm more of, I like to think of myself as a Bob the Builder. I'm trying to fix it now. Mm -hmm. So in my own personal relationships, Um, I struggle when someone tells me they want to take time. I'm like, because for me, within that time, it's almost like I revel in just overthinking and Mm -hmm. thoughts and thoughts. So by the time you do come to me, oh, I'm gone. I'm a lost case. (laughs) So I I don't know how best you would advise a sister, especially when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. Um, Should I communicate mm -hmm. my fears? Like, Mm -hmm. by you taking your time off, this is how it makes me feel? Yeah, actually, that's perfect. (laughs) Yeah, Um, yeah, so um, there's always, I think, that um, dilemma of... I want to fix things right now mm-hmm. and maybe my partner or my friend wants to take time. Yeah. And I usually feel like it's important for both parties to communicate that when you take time, mm-hmm. I start to feel scared mm. of my place in your in, in of my role in your in this relationship. Yeah. Um and even the person who needs to take time needs to communicate that I'm taking this time to think through this and that. Because oftentimes because I'm also the one, let's fix it now, I'm right? The and, when, <laughs> yeah, and when someone takes time, you yeah. start to like think like there's something terribly wrong with you or yeah. there's something wrong that you've done. So I think when both both parties communicate mm-hmm. and i find finding a compromise is important mm-hmm. um so you're not going to take like a week and mm-hmm. i'm just there anxious Waiting. right so trying to find a compromise <laughs> that works for the both of us yeah. where it's like you can learn to wait a bit more and the other person can learn to take a shorter time so yeah. i think just finding a healthy compromise that works for the both of you okay yeah. Only here on the SNS. I think I need to now open up about all my other dilemmas. 
ask so we can move on to the next yeah. she says hi steph my dilemma is i'm a first born daughter with a Girl. thousand mommy <laughs> issues she quite literally wrote a thousand mommy issues <laughs> <laughs> she said from neglect uh, from neglection scolding beatings harsh words and even being left out when the rest got new christmas clothes anyway so i started saying to myself and my mom says i am prideful i don't want to hate her but i unfortunately do please help <laughs> this is it home um, <laughs> <but> I <laughs> no i i feel like um already there's so many layers to this mm-hmm. um and i think this is something that me and mel have talked about so many times how mother wounds are the worst the worst and, and what like, do these look like in case someone the, is hearing mother wounds for the first time it looks like these things that she's explained right mm-hmm. this you have a difficult relationship with your mother or you're very critical of yourself because of the things that you know the expectations that she has of you or mm-hmm. the you know just those think of that issues but now it's coming from mm. your mom yeah right even like self esteem so mm. yeah it actually like, a lot of sorry, a lot of our body image as females just mm-hmm. stems from our moms right so mm. if you grew up seeing your mom constantly dieting you start to believe that you must do something in order to feel good about yourself right so you're constantly either dieting or working out so i think mother wounds are deeper, <laughs> deeper. we need the, a whole other session issues. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it's I think they're even deeper because like um I don't think the world of psychology has explored them as much as we've explored mm-hmm. daddy issues and that and father wounds. Mm-hmm. I was about to say daddy wounds. <laughs> that sounds so weird. Yeah. Daddy wounds. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah I think father wounds and daddy issues have been talked about, researched, case studies, all of mm. that, but mother wounds haven't. Um I uh, yeah, when it comes to like repairing your relationship with your mom i feel like um both of you need to want to do that okay. right um because the effort can't only be on your side imagine if you're putting in all that effort and there's no way she's trying to change or anything you're going to feel more frustrated it's you're going to grow in resentment it's going to get worse um but also i think <laughs> the first thing i would say is just try and be okay if that's not going to happen try and think about if if we're not able to fix this relationship how can i be okay how can i reparent myself in the ways that i felt like i wish my mother did right because a lot of the things that that being critical that being left out you start to feel it and start to do those things for yourself because that's how you've been taught that you need to treat yourself that's how you've been taught that you should be treated right so starting to learn how to reparent yourself what do you wish your mom gave you Mm-hmm. and how can you give that to yourself right um and then also i don't like uh, i don't mm-hmm. you know that that dilemma for should i forgive should i not mm-hmm. and people saying forgiveness is for you and not for the other person it's true but it also depends on how you look at forgiveness and letting go right mm-hmm. maybe for you forgiveness is you forgive and then you let them walk all over you again and you don't set boundaries right but i think letting go in the sense of accepting that okay you know if she wants to work on it we can work on it if she doesn't i have a responsibility to do this for myself because i'm the one who's in pain she might not even really be feeling the type of pain that i'm feeling mm-hmm. um yeah and just accepting that and trying to do what you can putting away what you can from her and just like drawing boundaries even for yourself Sometimes I think we talk about boundaries as for other mm-hmm. people but we forget about the boundaries we draw for ourselves like I will not allow myself to be talked to this way I'll not put, my, put myself in a position where I'm going to be belittled and things like that so that's what I would say because we yeah, Kwanza when she said eldest daughter I was like <laughs> girl <laughs> preach yeah. to the yeah. choir mm-hmm. um I think like everything you've said especially because I feel like it's like hits close to home for girl. you like is definitely works but i think most importantly it's prioritizing yourself mm-hmm. cuz one thing that i've seen even like with my elder sister is like like she had to prioritize me the priority was me mm-hmm. <laughs> right so she never learned how to prioritize herself and she's learning that now cuz it almost feels like a crime to prioritize herself right so i think really prioritizing yourself as an a first born african daughter is super important and prioritizing yourself in doing the things that you want not because you think that's what people expect of you mm-hmm. having fun cuz i think <laughs> first born daughters we start on a lot of like fun experiences cuz they had to be 
responsible or they felt left out so don't abandon yourself in the same ways that your mom abandoned you right mm. so just <laughs> pause <laughs> put that on a t-shirt <laughs> and sell it <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so just really prioritize yourself in the morning when you wake up just ask yourself what can i do for myself mm-hmm. that feels good and authentic uh, and authentic and real for me mm-hmm. yeah oh i'd like also to add something yeah even in on that front i feel like a lot of the times when we have mother wounds we feel unloved by our mother so thinking about okay what are my love languages and how can i show myself love mm-hmm. in these ways how can i take care of myself in these ways let's say your love language is acts of service how can you make your life easier how can you make your week mm. easier does that look like planning does that look like meal prep does that look like whatever right mm. if it's quality time does that look like a solo date <coughs> if it's words of affirmation does that look mm. like read, listening to a TED talk that's telling you you got this you know those babes mm. on TikTok yeah <laughs> very affirmative <laughs> yeah so yeah i think also just like trying to think about you know what are my love languages and how can i show myself love in these ways mm. um Honestly, I think yeah. But also, mm-hmm. you remember when we were having this chat about mm-hmm. um you start to attract people who trigger your mother wound. <laughs> so also being careful of the friends that you're bringing to your life because more often than not you find that um as a first born daughter with like mommy issues, you attract like your smaller siblings mm-hmm. almost in friends mm-hmm. so you're always the caregiver in your friendships you're a caregiver in a romantic relationships <laughs> <I'm> like, wow <laughs> no, yeah, so, true. so actually like stepping back and examining what role do i play in my friendships in my in my relationships because you will see that you become a caregiver you become your mom you become the very thing that you hated growing up mm. right so it's also now checking yourself and being like Imagine I can be the fun careless friend. Mm. I don't have to take care of everyone. I don't have to always be the one to listen to people and also now learning to be vulnerable with them because you find that you'll just be holding everything, carrying that baggage by yourself and it's like no ask tell your friend you're going through some shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't 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 be the one who's always listening to people. Yeah, so because your mom wasn't able to be there for you, don't imagine that everyone else won't be there for you. that part because let me now say in my personal <laughs> my, <laughs> my personal experience mm-hmm. um because what you've said has really really mm. hit home right um in terms of just uh, hey that being the mom in mm. in and i think when was it like last year i think my birthday month at mm-hmm. some point um i was sitting down with myself and i realized Imagine the door to that cage is open you're just the one who chooses not to walk out of it wait 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 let 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 that simmer let that settle <laughs> no but for real the door to that cage is open you're the one who just chooses not to leave you're the one who chooses to continue um in that cycle of being the the mom be not allowing yourself to have fun um mm. not communicating your needs with your friends not allowing your friends to come through for you because it feels like I think there's this transactionality of when you're an eldest daughter where when people come through for you you feel like oh shit now I owe them now mm. I have to I have to also mm. right so you're not really fully allowing people to show up for you because it feels like you have to pay it back mm. um and that also comes in the way of you know your relationships and your friendships because now you never feel like people really want to be with you or people really want to support you or you know all these things and i think sometimes it can even bring about some resentment because mm-hmm. you know you're the one who's putting yourself in that position of being the mom nobody asked you to do that, that right point. nobody asked <laughs> i had to i had to learn that the yeah. hard way right nobody asked me to do that nobody asked me to take care of everyone you're all adults mm-hmm. sometimes i'm even the youngest one yeah. but i'll be there mother doing henny the doing it <laughs> and oh my like, god um, <laughs> <laughs> melissa actually really called me out on it um in December. Yeah. Yeah, she really did. So, I think that's when I started to realize actually you don't you don't need to do all these things and you can start to reparent yourself and even ask for support in the places mm-hmm. that you feel like you're supported. Ask for support like ask someone to help you stay accountable when it comes to having fun. Ask someone to to show you these things. Like if you feel like because I was in a season where I needed words of affirmation. Mm-hmm. May I just told my friends guys right now, me like to me I'm going to believe I'm the best. Yeah. Because that's the what I need. <laughs> exactly because that's what I need in this season. So yeah, being able to just communicate your needs as well. I think 
we, yeah. we always circle back to communication. Communic- I feel like everything is always just like communication. communication yeah. But something else is also not tying your worth to what you bring to a friendship mm. and just knowing that you're worthy of love, support, affirmation and everything just as you are. You don't need to be mother hen. You don't need to help me through something. You can just be and it's okay and we'll love you. You don't have to do the most for us to love you. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) And also, yeah, just Mm. because I know the dilemma was related to her siblings and everything. Mm. Yeah, not just not just in your friendships, even in your mm. your relationships with your Familial. siblings. Familial. Mm. Yeah, yeah. cuz I think me and my sister have had a couple of conversations and she was like, "Girl, nobody asked you. Mm. <laughs> like yeah. I want you to have fun, you yeah. know." And I think that's the same thing that happened with you and your sister. Yeah, with me and my sister as well. We had to take time to like be friends. Mm. We had to be like, "Okay, so this is how my childhood affected me. This mm-hmm. is how her childhood affected her." Because we had such different experiences, you know, and it's crazy if you in the same house. In the same in the household, same household house. right? <laughs> so if you sit down and actually have a chat with your siblings and work through like, "Can we have a friendship?" Mm. Yeah. Right? And of course if both parties are willing, because also like don't force issues. Mm. Yeah. Because we'll all be at different places, at different points and seasons in our lives. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny to realize because my sister was like, "Me, I just need you to be my sister and my friend. I don't need you to be my mom." And exactly. I was like, "I don't want to be your mom either." <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, but you've been put in that position, but also being open to it'll take time to unlearn some yeah. of these behaviors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think okay. it must on the side. Yeah. <laughs> no, that one for sure hit home. Mm. Okay. So, I'm having this white guy. I don't know why there was emphasis on his <laughs> ca- 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 capacity. Yeah. Um, I'm having this white guy that we and also saying having. <laughs> I'm having. <laughs> okay, like so having. Having. for dinner or <laughs> <laughs> I'm having this white guy that we recently met online. We've only talked for four weeks now and he's already saying he loves me and can see sense. Sorry. Okay, and he's already saying he loves me. I can see sense in that, but rather thinking that he just wants a girlfriend to spend time with when he comes to Kenya for a two-year contract. So the dilemma is, should I or should I not give him a chance? Well, I mean, as someone Crickets. who falls in love, <laughs> as someone who falls in love in two business days, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, no, like, um, give yourself time. Like, I don't know why people assume that you must just jump into a relationship. Mm. Like, dating is getting to know each other. So just like get to know each other, mm-hmm. get to suss out and see if truly those are his intentions. And also, like, do, are you interested? Like, because yeah. she also talks about whether she wants to be with him, right? Mm. So don't think that now because he wants you, you must want him back. Yeah. Uh, have fun. Like, get to know him. Get to know each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she should give him a chance. To get to know each other. Okay. Not to, not to, <laughs> <be> <laughs> not to, be, not to jump into a relationship, mm-hmm. but just spend time together. See if it's genuine. Yeah. See if it's something you want. Mm. And then explore also do you have a problem with him being white? Because yeah, the way you have a lot of emphasis. There was emphasis. Mm. So like is that something that you mm. feel like would be a deal breaker for you? Maybe because there'll be like a cultural difference ah. or you feel like you won't be understood or a stereotype or whatever. Yeah, what does a white what, man mean yeah, to you? What, what does, does that, that mean? signify? Yeah. 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 That's okay. it. All the best is. <laughs> <laughs> to pay updates, by the way. To you and, and white guy. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, I'd love to get updates. Yeah, yeah like follow up. For real. Yeah. Absolutely. So she says, girl. Started with girl. girl. <laughs> he cheated. He got caught, apologized. And then I found a dating app on his phone and he said it's his best friends. Then he apologized and he's now telling everyone that I am his quote unquote wife. He literally got so emotional and said he's thinking of committing suicide <laughs> because I said I don't want him in my life anymore. What should I do? Leave. Oh, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Next dilemma. <laughs> that's no. very manipulative. So, that's like, very, very manipulative. And like, I don't know why women, we wait for so many reasons to leave. Imagine the first reason you get to leave, leave sis. Come. Yeah. What do you mean at year? Uh, it's my it's my cousin's over it's what is my best friends yeah like dating it's his app. best friends dating up on his phone but like do you have any apps of mine on no, your phone like, like why? even if you reason if yeah. you just sit down no. and listen to it and then also this thing for taking back people who've cheated 
no you are taking back eh someone mm. who's cheated you can't control if they'll cheat again just know yeah. what you're taking back mm-hmm. yeah um but honestly leave what's mm. at um, yeah and like i i get that for some people cheating is um unnegotiable mm-hmm. i get that because we all have different negotiables and non-negotiables in a relationship yeah but if you take back cheating know what you're taking back exactly right that means you're accepting that this person cheated on you are you willing to learn to trust them again can you really trust them again right so The signs are there man <laughs> just yeah yeah that was very manipulative that last part actually yeah, that last thing got emotional yeah. and said he's thinking of committing suicide na kichita alikuwa nafikira hivyo like i no to menjamisha yeah just like just leave things just, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but it's interesting when you speak of negotiables and non-negotiables i think sometimes people are just oblivious because we get this type of dilemmas often where i'm just mm. like okay it reminds me of you know that guy on tiktok who holds like a big flag a big red one and he's like <laughs> ma'am ma'am yeah. this is your red flag yeah. Yeah. so um uh, i think i've lost my train of thought yes i think for most people it's usually this i don't know if it's like a hope where you would ideally think that they would change can you really change someone is change feasible at this time mm. etc so yeah mm. it's that thing you were talking about mm-hmm. about um missing the potential of what it could have been i think yes. even in this situation it's <laughs> the same thing it's being in love with the potential mm. being in love with the idea, idea of the person you've created in your mind mm-hmm. and forgetting to see what you're being shown okay mm. yeah you fall in love with the potential mm-hmm. but also I think there's a big issue with the negotiables and non-negotiables. So because our mothers our mothers mm-hmm. stood for some things, we think we should stand for them. Yeah. Mm. We think we should persevere and you should be resilient in a relationship. Mm. And like life is already hard enough. Yeah. Like you shouldn't be no fighting for your damn life. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And a uh, uh, space that should be your safe space. Yeah. That should be the place you come back after the world has knocked you down. Mm. Exactly. You know and to get some knocking yeah. even further. No, what's that? Into the pits of hell. Pretty uh-huh. my best friends up. <laughs> Stand up sis stand up you're weak in the knees okay so she says hi stephanie so i have a group of girlfriends we met way back in high school and we go out together severally however any friend of mine including my boyfriend when we hang out with said group of friends they give me negative feedback about them and i see their point of view what is the next step for this situation negative feedback about her friends yes So mm-hmm. she there's an individual she has a group of girlfriends mm-hmm. uh that she, they met way back in high school. Mm-hmm. So every time somebody else meets said friends even including her boyfriend they always give her negative feedback about those friends and she highlights that she's actually able to see like their point of view. Mm-hmm. So what mm-hmm. should be the next step? Mm-hmm. I'm assuming she's asking for advice here. Yeah. <clears throat> um Honest. like observe observe because it's like you know when people tell you like your man is bad and you're just like oblivious right yeah. mm-hmm. so, i mean opinions are not facts for mm-hmm. sure but like if everyone is telling you the same thing yeah. like really take your time to observe and see what am i refusing to see in this situation mm-hmm. and maybe if it's setting boundaries mm-hmm. do that or communicating about it mm-hmm. yeah because chances are they probably don't even know they have this negative traits you know sometimes people are just doing things thinking it's normal yeah. mm-hmm. and and they don't know and then also just think about because she said um she kind of sees their point their of point view. of view mm-hmm. when they're giving that negative feedback then decide is this are this type of are this people that you want to keep in your life knowing mm-hmm. that you see that because i think sometimes we stay in situations because they're comfortable even when we've outgrown them but just because they're comfortable yeah. you know mm-hmm. so evaluate if mm-hmm. you can see these negative points is this something you can accommodate mm-hmm. or is this something that's an unnegotiable and you're like yeah i can't mm-hmm. do this anymore mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Ad- additionally it's interesting that i think with the a uh, reference of information she says we met way back in high school mm-hmm. so i'm assuming this is a a relationship so there's a lot of longevity yeah. there and maybe ideally you not be like i'm cutting all of you off <laughs> yeah. goodbye so i want us to like deep i mean uh, take a deep dive into mm-hmm. when people start to glamorize the longevity of relationships over their quality yeah cuz mm-hmm. that's that's where oh. I was going mm-hmm. um i think when you've known someone for long like you know all the shitty habits mm-hmm. and you become tolerant cuz okay. high school that's like years ago you're yeah. totally different mm-hmm. right now and so even the friends that you have right now 
kind of are in the same season as you but these others you know like there's just been so many changes mm-hmm. so at times we feel like because I've known you for long like we must just stay friends and maybe you're you're becoming something totally different you're unlearning and learning new ways of life and you just feel like you must stay stuck it's just like see must yeah yeah okay. i i agree and also i think it's just yeah like you've said the friends that you have now are probably aligned to who you are and mm. who you're becoming right now and sometimes you can actually have those long term friends who you grow with yeah. so you find your you're going mm. through different seasons together and it doesn't feel like your relationship is completely different and you're just holding on to the length of how mm. how long you guys have known each other um what was i going to say <laughs> what um, did you say <laughs> um like the seasons i guess yeah um yes mm-hmm. so like you you um and then you want to change you want to continue improving yourself of course we all want to keep mm-hmm. doing better yeah. for ourselves and sometimes it's just worth knowing and realizing that the environment you're in really plays a huge part in how far you'll go even in your healing in your growth mm-hmm. in every single aspect of your life so if staying with in these relationships if you can really evaluate and see that there's something it's not doing for me yeah. or there's there's parts of me that are stuck here mm-hmm. and that can't grow here because this is not a conducive environment for it right mm. yeah yeah and and i think also um not everyone needs to be your best friend not everyone needs to be a ride or die friend so we're also not saying like you must cut them off yeah there's definitely a need that they serve for you in that friendship mm-hmm. that's why you're still there so if it's you're going out friends imagine it's okay, it's okay as long as you're able to form new friendships that you feel like serve the season that you're in it doesn't mean that you must cut everyone off it's just knowing where the role that people play in your life right because sometimes it can feel like these people don't want you to change right so they want you to stay stuck in that situation so it's important to also explore and find people who will nurture the new season that you're in and it doesn't mean that these people don't have any need in your mm-hmm. in your life yeah mm-hmm. so it's just knowing where people play mm-hmm. yeah levels these levels to friendship yeah. and also remembering sometimes imagine friendship is not always like this and it's not always just like this sometimes mm-hmm. it's just like when i pitana you come back together yeah. it's like us. yeah it's mm-hmm. like us we've known each other for a while a since while. like 2015 mm-hmm. but then like these times that we haven't been like as close because of <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> i realize um, i can share it because <laughs> of the um, yeah life life mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. right so but like one thing i appreciate about us is like um whatever season she's in mm-hmm. we try i try to nurture that whatever mm-hmm. season i'm in i try to nurture that mm-hmm. and so there's times that we're super super close okay i don't know if we're ever going to yeah i don't, I think, don't so. think so that was back yeah. yeah but like yeah we had a time in our lives where we weren't as close mm-hmm. and like now we're like super super close and yeah. even still we're in different seasons of life but mm-hmm. like we accommodate that yeah and we're yeah. able to support each other through those seasons yeah so i think yeah. it's important for people to find that tribe that allows them to be in whatever season that they are in we mm-hmm. don't have to be the same we don't have to go through the same like seasons or like the same things now nah. yeah okay i mean she's a stronger one than me group i only speak to one person <laughs> <laughs> i'm like lucky you that yeah. me okay no, but um, school was traumatic yeah <laughs> scary Girl. so she says hi steph i've been dating this guy for around three years and i recently met someone new and we really have a deep connection i think i like him more than my actual boyfriend also he's really good in bed unfortunately my oh, boyfriend yes. is not blessed who call the new guy however is very inconsistent help a sister by inconsistent you mean wait first of all <laughs> <laughs> first of all mm-hmm. let's not bullshit each other mm-hmm. why are you cheating okay that's true though. yeah <laughs> Cuz I mean yeah sure let's talk about the new guy but first of all like like you have a boyfriend man mm. 3 years <laughs> 3 mm-hmm. years mm-hmm. Eh, yo yeah that's yeah. actually that's a point of concern cuz like <laughs> if you've gotten to the point of getting to know someone and then sleeping with them i feel like it would have even been different if you just slept with them but you've even invested like no let's slept with them like i feel like i babe <laughs> when you are judging you <laughs> said, <laughs> you've invested your 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 heart and mind and everything into this because mm-hmm. like why are we getting yeah. to know each other 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that point, that's what I'm saying. Not even the sex, like the fact mm. that you're like getting to know someone. Yeah. yeah. And I get it, like being in a long-term relationship, like sometimes you're like, oh, you know, let's see what's out in the field. But like eh, the fact that you've cheated, I feel like first of all. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about Let's that. Before we dive into yeah. the inconsistencies of the new guy. Because the yeah. fact that you're considering this guy being inconsistent, it means that you want to be in a relationship with this other guy. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. like, And even comparing. Where? Yeah. Um, to yeah. may lose it, Kidogo, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, mm-hmm. a, that's, a, that's big a big one. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. I, honestly, I, I don't know. I just say just like... And if it's... Do you consider why you're in that relationship? Because... Yeah. And if it feels hard to let go of that relationship, so that's because you know sometimes maybe you're in a long relationship and you still love this person mm. and you still want to be with this person but there's parts of yourself that you feel like you want to explore outside mm. the relationship or different experiences like the one she's having right now that she'd mm-hmm. like to explore outside the relationship. Mm-hmm. Then maybe talk to your partner mm. about what a break would look like because maybe it's not a forever thing you just want to try mm. if you want <laughs> you know? if you want yeah. um, but just explore what does a break look like does that look like mm-hmm. um, we go and then we come back we see if we are on the same wavelength mm. does that look like seeing other people but not being physical with them mm-hmm. does that you know just exploring mm. or leaving yeah mm, that's always an option yeah. yeah but i think also not just communicating about a break but mm-hmm. communicating about what needs are not being met because mm-hmm. people don't just cheat like for fun okay maybe there are like serial yeah. cheaters but yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> um communicate with your partner that i feel like this need is not being met yeah be it sexually emotionally whatever but first communicate that this is how you're feeling i mean that should have been first before the cheating but yeah now that we're here, mm-hmm. communicate yeah. that you feel like some of your needs are not being met and then see how to move forward with that because there's people who want breaks. They, maybe the partner would not want to be in the relationship. Maybe they'd want to open it up. Mm-hmm. Like, first, just communi- <laughs> communicate. Communicate. <laughs> communicate. That should just be the title of this yeah. video, no? Communicate. Yeah. Okay. But also, I think mm-hmm. it's interesting um, that part for communicating needs and I think it can be really scary. Mm. It can, especially if it's sexually, because like that's what she's even comparing, right? Mm. I think that can be a really hard conversation to have. Mm -hmm. But no matter what happens, after you guys have that conversation, just know your best experiences are always ahead of you. Mm. Always. Like Mm -hmm. you won't, I don't think there's any time you'll, you'll be like, what? (laughs) <laughs> you know mm. they, you'll you'll have situations where you're like wow but then eventually mm-hmm. your best experiences are, are always ahead of you like Maisha okay now after this relationship you know so just for clarity when we say communication of needs is she to would you advise her to come clean or just end it without informing him is there any good that would come <laughs> from informing him um <clears> hey <throat> that one I the jury like is some... split. <laughs> yeah, check it out with the law. Because, I mean, sometimes, like, you can communicate and that can take someone through so much, just feeling, like, incompetent almost and mm-hmm. just, like, oh, my God, I couldn't satisfy this person. Mm. But on the other hand, it may provide the other person, like, information as to why. So this is why we're actually breaking up. Because it could be unclear. Like, we're breaking up why, you know. Honestly, I feel like, hey, Hapo. I think I it's know. very tricky it's and so I think tricky. it's 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 a very case by case thing. Yeah. Like I think we'd need to have more context to mm. be like should you mm. spill mm-hmm. the beans or it's, not? It's not a one size fits all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hi gorgeous. Ooh. Thank you. Oh wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let that simmer. <laughs> she says I hope you are well. I am. I am in a 7 month relationship now and it's becoming a bit hectic because of drinking problems. So my boyfriend would go out with his friends on a random Thursday afternoon and the drinking would continue up to maybe Monday or just a, or just drink on a random weekday. Um I'm trying to see if there's more context to this. Yes. So I think that's the the dilemma until mm. there so i'm assuming um there's the drinking problems in the seven month relationship mm. okay well first of all did you find him doing that 
okay. <laughs> like was he an alcoholic? Yeah. Did you yeah. did you find him doing that? Because mm-hmm. that mean you, that means you consented to dating you this man who has this. those four mm-hmm. day benders. Yeah. And accepting means um you don't necessarily necessarily have to be okay with it or agree with it, mm-hmm. but you've accepted that. This is my presence. That's your man. <laughs> That's my man. That's and my I'm looking at him. I'm a sick I'm a sick beside him. Exactly. So mm-hmm. if you if if you found him like that, mm-hmm. to be honest, I don't know why we expect people to change and this is how you found it. Is I I don't know. <laughs> like, of course, uh-huh. of course, like you want the best for your partner exactly. and you like for them to change. Mm-hmm. But change only happens when you want to change. Yeah. Like, yeah. in as much as your partner may want you to do things differently, and of course, there's those small, small changes that you make in a relationship. Mm-hmm. But to the core, if this is some, this is like what this man enjoys. Mm. I mean, of course, like I think we have like an alcohol problem in Nairobi. Mm. But <laughs> Yeah. But like imagine if he doesn't want to change like I don't think you'll inspire change in the man. So that's the first thing. Like if you found him like that, eh, it's, it's a bit tricky to now make someone change their life and you found them doing that. Mm-hmm. But also like on the other hand like if it's something that has just come up, mm-hmm. maybe there's like stresses that he's going through and everything that mm-hmm. he should probably seek help for cuz mm-hmm. yeah, I think we're using alcohol like as a, <laughs> as a, as crutch, a crutch for everything. Mm-hmm. So if it started like after maybe like 3 4 months or whatever mm-hmm. um it's just also trying to see like what's actually going on and how can you best support him yeah. um and of course he needs to seek help first and he needs to see that he'd like to change first of all mm. yeah mm-hmm. and i think just to add on that yeah because everything you said spot on chef's kiss chef's kiss um even as you're talking about that like are there any stressors what's what's your why what's where is this behavior coming from what are you trying to avoid mm. um I think also just like being supportive and non-judgmental. Mm-hmm. Cuz if you're going to be judgmental about it, chances are they'll not feel safe to talk about it again. Right? That is if they recognize that it's a problem. If, it, oh, okay. this, yeah. If, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. cuz honestly, that yeah, point, that's that's that. Point, yeah. <laughs> they could actually just be like, but this is me. Yeah. Me, me, it's just yeah. Um and I don't think you can force help on someone. If they don't want to get help, that's imagine Now it's just you again to go back and evaluate is this something I'm willing to sit through That's right what I mean. <laughs> Are you going to stick beside him for <laughs> said no <laughs> Cut the cameras dead <laughs> Yeah Okay so in this context it's either um she evaluates the situation whether she found it uh, although I will say I like to give people the benefit mm-hmm. of doubt that mm-hmm. maybe at the beginning of their relationship it was not necessarily a problem mm. and then it, there's something about like when people are at the peak or the beginning of the mm. relationship yeah. they are this yeah. m- prince charming and then you know months in the the beast that's yeah true. that's true also mm-hmm. we have like rose colored glasses in the beginning of a relationship yeah. so me, he may have been doing this shit but you're just like so in love that yeah. <laughs> you just like yeah. have a good time yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly so that, oh my gosh you just have fun on Thursday yeah, yeah. yeah. But, okay but mm. also just bring up the conversation it's making you uncomfortable just bring mm-hmm. it up communication, um, communication. <laughs> bring it up mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I have a question and I think this is especially in reference to my own personal life there is so much emphasis on communication mm-hmm. and then this comprehension is it my responsibility for you to make sure that whatever i say was received well because like regardless of like i might may have the best of intentions and i was having this conversation with my friend the other day how often when people apologize they say it was never my intention but i was reading something about intention versus impact mm-hmm. like irregardless of I mean we would assume people have the best of intentions but mm-hmm. you know when it comes to like harm and hurt cost as a result or consequently so I've always I mean we emphasize so much on communicating but how in an ideal world would it be possible for me to make sure that it is received well or the person comes to a level of comprehension mm-hmm. I um, personally think it's a half and half thing mm-hmm. where um you're responsible for your delivery Mm-hmm. right okay if you deliver it the wrong way and someone comprehends it the wrong way then you know mm. <laughs> but if you do deliver it in a kind compassionate and assertive way mm-hmm. emphasis on assertive because mm-hmm. i think a lot of the times we move between either being aggressive or mm-hmm. being passive mm-hmm. and a lot of the times when we're being we're trying to be assertive we end up being aggressive right in how we communicate and we're not looking at we're not trying to 
I think a lot of the times, especially when it's communication, because in this context we're talking about, especially when there's conflict or things like that, um, when we're being assertive, we know it's us against the problem, right? But when we're being passive, it's like, okay, you can just walk all over me. When you're being aggressive, it's me against you, right? So you're responsible for your delivery, but you're also not responsible for how they take it, okay. right? Because even then they have to, I mean... Kwanina, it's only me who's coming. Mm. Communication is two way. It's mm. about how I, how I present it and how you hear it. Do you mm. are you listening? Are you listening to respond or are you listening to understand? Right. Okay. So yeah. Mm. And I think also like if you're the one who's being um, chatted to, mm -hmm. it's important to note that no one is doubting your intention. I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm saying you did bad things to me that mm -hmm. hurt me. Because I think impact will always trump intention. It's like saying, like, I shoot you right now, but it wasn't my intention. So I still shot you, yeah. Yeah. right? So the impact is you have a gunshot wound, even if I didn't mean to shoot you. So it's also like when you're receiving communication, really separating yourself from the problem. It's like, no, this is problematic behavior that caused this, but not me as a person. I'm not the problem. I just have problematic behaviors. Okay. Ooh, I just have something to add on to that that I was talking to um, <laughs> my partner about. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> it's serious. It's okay. Um, it's okay. <laughs> but it's just made me think mm -hmm. in terms of like, you know, impact and intention and communicating like apologies. Mm. I think it's something worth exp You know the way it's so easy for us now, we know, you know your friends love languages, you know they are all of those things. I think two things that we need to invest in learning about the people in our lives and learning about ourselves is our conflict style, mm. right? Like the way you were talking about earlier with when we we're talking about attachment styles, do you mm. need time to, do you need to take time off mm -hmm. before you have the conversation? Do you want to be told right now? And also like, what does what, what does a genuine apology feel like to you, right? Because you could tell me you're sorry and it wasn't your intention. And for you, you're being genuine, but it doesn't feel genuine to me. For me, a genuine apology feels like, um, looks like someone truly understanding where I was umizwad mm. and being like, yeah, I know this and this made you feel this and this type of way and blah, blah, blah. And then it has to be finished with physical touch. If we're not hugging after or holding hands, it doesn't feel genuine. It feels like they still that tension. So that's for me. Okay. So thinking about what does a genuine apology look and mm -hmm. feel like to, to you and sharing those with your friends, your partner, mm -hmm. your family, just so that you can all be, you know, on the same page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think uh, yeah, I think that's golden, babe. Yeah, because you know sometimes <laughs> <laughs> you can just tell someone, "Ah, see, I'm sorry," mm -hmm. you know, and like that's not enough. But to another person, just the words "I'm sorry" is enough. Yeah. So understanding even like fight languages and everything is super important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me, not that anybody has asked, but <laughs> 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 genuine apologies to me. Uh, or disingenuous. Let me start with those mm -hmm. ones. And when people take complete absolution, it's almost like I am feeling these feelings out of the air. You mm -hmm. know, like when someone says, sorry, you felt X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. not sorry, I made mm -hmm. you feel. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we shall, we shall, we shall yeah. get into the nitty gritty. <laughs> yeah, that. no, I get that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, I get that yeah. I get that one. It feels very nonchalant, passive aggressive. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, but that wasn't my intention. Like, I don't care. Regardless yeah. of your yeah. intention. Yeah. Okay. I really like this guy. But the one time I told him, he pushed me away for months. Then later came back and we were friends again. I still like him, but I don't want to tell him because I don't want to risk our friendship, quote unquote, relationship. Now here's the dilemma. He doesn't want us to be anything. So he's reached out for what? Hmm. Um... I'm a Rudia. I really, okay, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I said I very intentionally, you know. So I really like this guy, but this one time I told him and he pushed me away for months. Mm -hmm. So she, I'm assuming it's a she, she tells him that this is how I feel about you and he pushed her away and they were not in communication for months. And then later he came back and they became friends again. She still likes him, but mm -hmm. she doesn't want to tell him so that she does not risk their friendship or whatever relationship they have. Now, the dilemma is he doesn't want them to be anything. So I'm assuming he does not want to pursue this outside oh. of yeah, friendship. friendship. Oh. So what should the sister do? 
What? If that's your answer, imagine if he doesn't want it, you can't force him into a relationship. Mm. One, um, whether you want to communicate that you like him or not, is solely dependent on what you're expecting to get out of that conversation. Are you expecting him to change and be like, "Oh, I like you too," or are you expecting him to just know so that he can give you time to kind of like, you know, um, to just let him know, like, "Hey, if you see me acting some type of way, just know, I'm trying to manage my feelings for you." Um and also just thinking do are you are you able to be friends with this mm-hmm. person knowing the feelings you have for them do you need some time away from them so that you can just like um try and you know manage those feelings and maybe start seeing other people so that out of sight out of mind it's not just like this is a person that you're thinking about all the time mm-hmm. Um you know that thing for the best way to get over someone is to get under someone else. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> it has a level of truth. <laughs> it it yeah. has a level of truth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, explore other relationships and get to know other people that you could be interested in romantically just so that you don't um cuz that thing for wait me I did that thing for waiting when I was 16. Let mm. me tell you. I waited for a year. Yeah. And I was told I didn't ask you to wait. <sighs> okay. Just drop us just this pin yeah. and location so, where we're coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so I feel like don't don't do the wait the mm. wait game especially because he's made his intentions clear. He said he doesn't want to do this more than a friendship. He doesn't want to get into a relationship with you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think also like um believe what people tell you. Uh, 100%. <laughs> don't don't believe what don't be the lulu girl. Just mm. believe what people tell you because imagine if someone has told you I do not want to be in a relationship with you just believe them don't believe what you tell yourself because mm-hmm. like you said thoughts are not facts yeah. feelings are not facts like if someone has told you this and this believe them it's like how when you're starting to date someone and they tell you how like you know I'm not serious those two small small to red flags yeah. believe them <laughs> believe them because yeah. yeah. there's a reason why they're telling you that and i and i think that we deserve a love that is like i want you mm. if you have doubts about it then mm-mm. yeah oh tell me that again because like <laughs> if, no, if you have any doubts doubts about whether this person like wants to be with you and their intentions for you then just stop yeah mm, and you deserve yeah. a love that loves you loudly like he's mm. proud to be like <laughs> treat this is my girl <laughs> this this my man yeah, yeah. and I'm a stick my man my man my man okay so can we touch on the pushing her away mm-hmm. is it that for some people they just i don't know get completely closed off because let me tell you for this sister the way I would have thought and overthought it during mm. those months and then I'm trying to figure out or just grasp an understanding that you became friends after yeah mm-hmm. have they explored that first of all because like after the separation did they talk like um so this made me feel uncomfortable and I felt like I needed time or did they just you know step right in because that's a fear like if yeah. you just like like your best friend like it, like <laughs> if she if she comes back to our life now yeah. i'd be like yeah i need some explanation yeah. because why do you think you can just enter and leave my life the way you wish mm. what's in yeah. yeah okay so we wish her all the best <laughs> yes nam to pay up it by the way i know oh my god okay so there is one that i am really looking for this one's a hot one okay <laughs> Hi Steph, I love your show so much. Thank you. Anyway, I have a dilemma or oh, more of a question. Over the past 3 months, I discovered that my mom, mother has been having an affair with a married man. She's been sneaking him into the house most times at night thinking that I'm asleep, but in reality I'm not. So one time she bribed me into getting out of the house and when I came back, they locked themselves in the house and it just looked like they were doing something together. I got mad and I didn't talk to her for like a week. To be honest, uh, the second time he also she also brought him into the house and I found them sleeping together in the bed and ended up not not talking for like another two days. The third time I had I had them having sex. Imagine, I was making noise by pretending that I'm coughing so that she could know that I'm hearing them. Mm. She then came to my room and I couldn't control myself and I told her, "Umemaliza." <laughs> and she started pretending like "Umemaliza nini?" just a lot of back and forth and after that she told me i thought we were in to mkubwa and i left i've been crying ever since and locked myself and i locked myself in my room 
I'm just confused and I don't know what to do since I'm not confrontational. I just feel like she's not owning up to her mistakes and making it look like it's a me problem. Later on that day, she told me that by me telling her Ume Maliza was rude and disrespectful, but I'm just sad that she didn't want to hear my POV. Please help. Am I overreacting or just advice on what I should do? Because I'm confused and I've been crying almost all night. For context, I am 22 years and my mom is not married. This has happened four times in the span of four months. Please help. Mm -hmm. um, I think yeah. we're all just, you know. Yeah. 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 Um I have, you I have so many things to yeah. say. So it's to collect thoughts. Yeah, I, but I need to collect my thoughts okay. so you can go. Mm -hmm. um, the, the dilemma is, does she think she's overreacting? Yes, or could mm -hmm. you just advise her? Because she um, she doesn't know what she, what she should do. She mm -hmm. has been confused and been crying almost all night. Yeah, no, eh, they need to have a really open and honest chat because she's an adult and she knows what's happening and it's understandable that she feels that she overreacted um because i can imagine like myself in that situation where like on one hand like my mom is an adult she's allowed to do whatever she does but on the other we're living in the same roof like i'd expect um you to be honest with me mm -hmm. like not to explain your behavior but just tell me like i'm seeing this man and this and that and not be sneaky about it because it's giving teenager mm -hmm. like <laughs> she's sneaking well, yeah. him in yeah. she's bribing you to leave the house mm -hmm. yeah i think that's it's such sneaky behavior and of course it got her to that point of just oh no, she my imploded, yeah. 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 yeah so i understand that frustration for sure and they just need to have like an open and honest chat about their expectations of each other because maybe also this is me assuming but maybe there's also like hidden or stuff she hasn't talked about when it comes maybe to like the dad and whatever because maybe it hurts her to see her mom doing this mm -hmm. so also just telling her mom like this is how i feel about this and that mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know her mom is an adult she's allowed to do whatever she wants if that means seeing someone who's married, mm. she has her own reasons for doing that. But that doesn't take away from the feelings that it's bringing up with you. You know, maybe um, now you're seeing your mom in a different light. The respect has reduced. Um, maybe you're also feeling like, but mom, you're worth a love that's yours. Mm. You don't have to share. Mm. You know, maybe those are where all those feelings of anger and frustration are coming from because i can imagine if i was in the same situation um i would probably be feeling like but you deserve someone who will love you mm -hmm. and who is yours who you don't have to hide because maybe when that sneaking is not for the mom maybe it's because of him mm -hmm. you know so i i i, I would i feel like for me that's where my frustration would come from and maybe i'd even explode like she did um so I don't I think yes you could have done it in a different way of course because like yeah we don't we don't have to always be exploding but like Melissa said I think you guys should sit down and have an open and honest conversation about it because like even after that um argument the 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 mom said see I thought you were grown mm -hmm. right so maybe the mom is also like expecting her to understand that you know this happens because you never know why the mom is in this situation so just have an honest conversation about it and because you're living in the same roof maybe there's boundaries you want to set maybe the boundary is can i can i know him can you introduce him to me i don't need to be besties with him but like just know um can it not feel like you're bribing me to leave the house can we just have on an honest conversation if you're gonna have a date or a netflix and chill thing with him let me know my in pema advance, in yeah. advance <laughs> instead of having it to be like, mm. you know, that sneakiness is probably very, very frustrating. Mm. Um, set those boundaries that you feel like you need to set because even just, I, I feel like there's no bad emotion. That's something that mm. we always say, right? But that anger and that frustration is telling you that there's something, there's a line being crossed that you're not okay with. Mm. Explore what is that line? Is it the sneaking around? Mm -hmm. Is it... Um, are you afraid that you... Because I think sometimes even people are afraid that I will start to internalize that and think it's okay even in my own life that mm. I can just be, 
you know be with someone who maybe is not mine mm-hmm. fully um so what are your fears what are your thoughts behind this situation and and bring them up honestly and openly but also with kindness and compassion because this is a very very sensitive um mm-hmm. point i don't think anyone will just but people are different mm-hmm. but i don't think anyone their first choice will be to be with someone who's not fully theirs yeah unless maybe that's your jam mm-hmm. but there has to be something that's there yeah so being compassionate as well and mm-hmm. compassionate to yourself as well like imagine mm-hmm. your anger is valid your frustration mm-hmm. is valid mm-hmm. so yeah mm-hmm. two things for me uh-huh. the silent treatment let's talk about it i'm, I'm always yeah. I, i think maybe in my own personal life um when i was younger like i think i would be but for me i'm those people who i can't be mad forever so <laughs> i'll probably get a white in the next hour so but you know the fact that they have this what is it, consistent it's it has a, a, a um it has like a, a dazzle of consistency where this thing happens and i go mm-hmm. silent so i think we should delve more into silent treatment and you know the adverse effects it has on like both parties yeah, yeah. No, and yeah. my people choose to be silent yeah. i feel like there's so many reasons for yeah. silent treatment <laughs> one could be avoidance mm-hmm. the conversation is very uncomfortable mm-hmm. because let's be real in the african context will you go and sit down with your mom and tell and exactly. be talking about and you your live sex life? in her yeah. household yeah you, you are be, just but she, a squatter yeah <laughs> <laughs> you will be talking about your sex life or hers yeah. right um these are things that are considered as taboo i don't mm. think they should but i think we should be able to have open and honest conversations even about sex with mm-hmm. our parents mm-hmm. but of course there has to be a boundary i'm not going to tell you how he cg he but yeah you know just within the boundaries the context right? of parent and yeah. child mm-hmm. yeah um sexual so treatment could also be a very manipulative tactic mm. where oh so now mm. so now you think you can talk to me the way you want or so now you think and you just go silent right yeah. so i think silent treatment has a lot of things and in this context i feel like it's very much avoidance because this is a very tricky thing to talk about with your parent um but you know i can't know because there's mm. there's a lot of nuance. history nuance mm. co- context that probably might not be there to make that conclusion but yeah i think it's worth just like trying to break the ice even when you're having and i know silent treatment is something that's very prideful you know like you're not going to talk to me when me I won't talk to you you know type of thing but sometimes it's worth just going ahead and having mm-hmm. that conversation because so so you'll sit in that uncomfortable mm-hmm. silence forever you'll walk on eggshells forever you'll grow in resentment forever right um yeah and even when you're having that conversation i think it's important to even bring up we don't have to cross a line that you're uncomfortable with you can let me know when you feel like this is getting too much and getting too personal and too private but being willing to open up the conversation because i think sometimes our parents want to have these conversations with us it's just that they don't know how to because they grew up not knowing much about communication they didn't have um a lot of them didn't have like a very in-depth relationship mm-hmm. with their parents where they could communicate and they wish they could change the narrative but they don't know where to start mm-hmm. but we have the tools so you know sometimes maybe if you start because like me in, in my relationship with my parents because i started being open and communicating about things i noticed i started getting comfortable because they're like oh so it's not a it's not so weird it's not so weird she's going to be receptive to it because maybe they they're feeling some type of way about coming to you with it because they are scared they'll be judged or things like that so yeah mm, yeah yeah definitely and i think um for us the silent treatment is so uncomfortable because we want to change things but sometimes for them they're okay with it because they're so used to like not talking about things with their parents so you just have to like just talk it out because i think it's more uncomfortable to have silent treatment than to actually talk about it yeah yeah, yeah. and the conversation will end the discomfort will end It'll it's end, not yeah. permanent you know like in a week you'll be laughing about something <laughs> exactly yeah. so yeah, yeah just so more often it. than not it's usually the fear of that mm. conversation more than the conversation mm. itself yeah. yeah but all the best babe that one yeah <laughs> it's above me now so time is really you know 
Hey, I would like to know how one can get over the fear of intimacy or like even getting attached to people, both platonic and romantic relationships. For context, I'm 21 years and I've never dated nor had a best friend. So she has or they have a fear of intimacy and attachment. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's giving fearful avoidance. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I think it's first like self-awareness, like learning to understand where is it coming from? Like what patterns in your childhood did you have? How are you conditioned to... Because sometimes it's conditioning. Sometimes you're actually brought up in a household where it's like, nah, fuck people. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. People don't matter. Yeah. Right? So sometimes it's not always rooted in trauma. It could be rooted in trauma, but sometimes it's also just you've been conditioned to not see the importance of having people in your life. So first understand where it's coming from and then now work towards what would an ideal friendship relationship be like to you. Because then the beauty about that is you get to decide for yourself. You get to discover what feels right for you. But first just start understanding like where is this rooted in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because probably your beliefs of people are different like maybe you feel like people are not to be trusted or you just can get through things alone so you need to actually like challenge those beliefs and have more positive beliefs around people okay yeah i would say exactly what she said especially the part for finding out where these fears and thoughts coming from what limiting beliefs do you have around making connections with people um, and challenging them by putting yourself out there mm -hmm. i feel like that's the best way to get over fears you can't get over fear just by understanding it, right? Mm -hmm. You also have to put yourself in situations where people prove that they can be there mm -hmm. for you, where you feel supported and you're like, actually, um, people are not as bad as I thought, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. just basically exactly what Mel said. Yeah, and also, like, do it, do it even if it feels uncomfortable. Sit in that discomfort of intimacy or of um, interacting with people because I think a lot of times we just we run away from anything that feels uncomfortable so you have to also just sit through it and it'll get easier the more you put yourself in that situation but if you don't put yourself in that situation then the fear is so big right so just do it even if it feels uncomfortable yeah and with time the fear becomes so small mm, you're like what was like, I afraid <laughs> what of was you this? know yeah yeah sitting in that discomfort is actually very important um, even when you're feeling like cringe Mm -hmm. just allow <laughs> that <laughs> cringiness <laughs> <laughs> just allow the cringiness to yeah. just come and pass yeah. and and even try and you know reframe that experience that you're having like mm -hmm. if it's like i these people are so weird even you sometimes you're weird yeah. so you know accommodate people but also yeah mm -hmm. okay i've actually remembered we, I, this one i wanted to share and i've seen it and then it's gone so that was, that one could be the last one okay uh, something about um uh, household, yes. Hello, wow, it's the way they start high gorgeous. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> take me out to dinner first. <laughs> I'm a firstborn daughter in a family of five. So I think, you know, consequently, as we've continued, there's been a, a theme mm. of a lot of firstborn daughter. Is, is it called like firstborn daughter, elder daughter, daughter, daughter syndrome? syndrome. Yeah. yeah. Even before we proceed, maybe you can talk to us more about what the elder, what is it? Eldest so, daughter syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we've, like talked a bit about it yeah. but most times um i think it's very african first of it all is, yeah. <laughs> context is always like in an african household yeah. where you're made deputy parent mm -hmm. um oh i like that yeah, yeah. you're like yeah. just deputy parent you're expected to be the responsible one you're not allowed to fuck up because that's just like crazy like mm. why are you making mistakes yeah. right so there's a level of perfectionism now how it manifests as an adult you expect yourself to just be perfect you have trouble with being vulnerable you are the caregiver in all of your relationships and friendships um most times they, i think there's also like a level of low self-esteem yeah because you were just made to feel like you're not enough until you do You've this and that eggs. so mm -hmm. transactionality um also, like a bit of lack of boundaries because you just want to help everyone and Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then difficult relationships with your mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, especially because you feel like she's she should have fought for you or she's the one who put those responsibilities on you. And I think there's a lot of loneliness that comes with eldest daughter syndrome mm -hmm. because not many people can relate to your experience. You're mm. watching your siblings have the time of their lives with no consequences, and sometimes you pay the consequences for their mistakes. Um, 
and on top of that i feel like just that adultification and parentification mm. aspect of it where um you've not been a child you've not made mistakes you've not had fun hujacheza kwa matope because you know you know you know you know you know you know so yeah that that lack of you i don't even think you're with ed- eldest daughter syndrome a lot of the times i don't think you're very in tune with your inner child and you've not allowed yourself to mm. play in different ways to have fun and yeah i think a big part is just allowing yourself even to play right now. Yeah. Right? Mm. Play doesn't end just cuz you're a kid. Play can True. look in there's a lot of different ways that we can play as adults. Mm-hmm. Whether that be doing hobbies, whether that be going and having a game night with your friends, whether that be sex. I feel like sex is also it's like playing. it's playing, mm. right? Um so just allowing yourself to have these experiences. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I digress. What talking okay. about? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just wanted to 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 grasp because uh-huh. it's something that I've seen with mm-hmm. a lot of the dilemmas. So she says being burdened with responsibilities has caused such a strain on my relationship with my siblings. It's hard for them not to see me as a parent now mm-hmm. that we are all grown up. I'm feeling even more estranged to them. What mm-hmm. do I do? Mm-hmm. I think it goes back to again communication having yeah. open and honest communications with your siblings they might not really fully understand where you are coming from the pressure that you had because they didn't experience that right so having that open and honest conversation and like we had said earlier trying to build a friendship with your mm. siblings because and it takes time because of course you care about them if you've been made a proxy parent and you have played that role for a long time. Of course you'll start to care about them like they're your children. So it also takes time for you to detach that that um feeling like you have to take care of them, you have to tell them what to, what not to do and what to do. Um you also have to detach the extra responsibility you give to yourself um when it comes to them and they also have to learn how to accommodate the difficultness of it all for for you right so it it will take time for both of you to build that relationship of being friends and being siblings outside being like proxy parent mm-hmm. and proxy children mm-hmm. um yeah and start i think that's first of all where i would say you guys should start by having that conversation and being intentional about creating a friendship with your siblings um Yeah and it has to be again an effort on both sides it can't be just you but i think that it's very important to be able to do that and to also now start setting boundaries even with your parents because maybe they have this mm. expectation that you're going to fix an issue like when something happens able to talk to your sister able mm. to talk to your brother right having that conversation and being like okay guys um they're also your children you didn't they, you didn't have someone to tell that you go and talk to me Mm. Right you didn't have someone to say go and talk to Wendy you parented mm. me on your own so you can also do this for your other children I will give you insight where you need but I'm not going to do this um for you and just having that conversation with your parents and talking about how it's strained your relationship I think that's one thing that has really helped um especially for me and my sister on top of us um creating that friendship I've had the conversation with my parents and told them that yeah you know like I was put in this position where now me and my sister are not sisters it doesn't feel like that and that's a very heavy weight to carry on both sides because you want a sister yeah but you have a mom or you mm-hmm. have a daughter right mm-hmm. and also just um it will also take time to detach yourself from the responsibility of their failures and the the self worth you gain from fixing their problems or from being that parent because chances are with eldest daughter syndrome you were celebrated more when you did this deputy mm-hmm. parent roles right so you grew up thinking that your worth and who you are is solely determined on that if you don't do that then who are you are you worth anything are you worth receiving praise are you worth receiving encouragement and love and all of those things so yeah mm, yeah i love everything that you said um and i think there's also like radically accepting that 
your siblings will never understand that that was your experience um and this is me speaking like as a middle child who was a last one for a long time till mm-hmm. now i don't understand the whole thing i truly because i honestly feel like um it's an experience that you have to be there to fully understand i emphasize but i don't fully understand it so you need to accept that imagine <laughs> they may not fully understand it they learn to empathize with you and being okay with that um and then since there are five siblings learning to have a separate relationship with each of them because mm-hmm. they're different points in their lives so just learning to accept i mean learning to be friends with whatever they need in that time and then allowing yourself to be human um i feel like first one sisters just think <laughs> i don't know like superman <laughs> like <laughs> like just yeah. be human like mm-hmm. it's okay you can make mistakes you can like do whatever you want so just allow yourself to be human in front of your siblings so that also like they can see that oh they're not always perfect yeah. and also cuz like um sometimes you find that it's difficult to share things with elder sisters because they're perfect mm-hmm. and they always have their shit together mm-hmm. so the more you allow yourself to be human it will open it will also open our door where i'm like oh i can actually be open with you and tell you you know this is what i'm going through yeah. so just allow yourself to be human Yeah and that part for acceptance I love it because even us will never fully understand your experience exactly. and we'll never fully understand why you are not seeing exactly. why you are not understanding <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah so just accepting that we'll uh, we'll try and understand to our best ability and we'll try and accommodate each other but you'll never really mm. have that full experience yeah. to to know yeah. yeah and i think generally in life um it's unfair to expect people to fully understand our experiences and our difficulties because no one can ever fully understand yeah so just acceptance yeah Yeah. there's something that you've said yes i Mm -hmm. struggle towards the when you've mentioned that uh it is unfair of us to expect people to fully understand and i had this conversation with my sister wairimo who's probably one of the most self-aware people i've met and i think we mentioned she mentioned once why is it that I want you to, why is it that I feel compelled to make you understand mm-hmm. and so I've had to it's been like an interesting interplay between wanting to make you understand and also just accepting that you may never fully understand and that's okay I struggled with that I was like why are you not feeling or being able to see my pain or my joy or my frustrations mm-hmm. in the same way that I am Yeah. Especially in instances where I almost expect you to already mm-hmm. this is like new this is not new to you like you are not a complete stranger you mm-hmm. are my sibling or you are my friend or you are my partner. So I think just learning to let go of you need to understand where I'm coming from and just sometimes it's not in my place to understand but mm. I can just accept. Yeah, no definitely because yeah. sometimes that lack of acceptance just breeds so much resentment. Oh, bro. You become so <laughs> resentful yeah. because like why don't you understand? I yeah. need you to understand. And it's yeah. like imagine no, we can still develop a healthy relationship and empathize with each other as long as I'm providing a space for you to tell me mm-hmm. about your experiences and I'm open to understanding how I can make it better now. Because what happened in the past like we just need to let go of that because yeah. i also feel like as siblings eh we have grudges you can <laughs> and, and you, you have like a backlog yeah. you have a fire yeah. like last year you did this and this and this and yeah. the year before that you did x and y like and z like when we were five yeah. i remember yeah. yeah so it's like no let's make room for new experiences yeah and i think a lot of the time when we are feeling very very misunderstood and we're like why can't you understand me i think what we're looking for the most is validation mm. emotional validation um because yeah it's true nobody will ever understand you but if someone really validated your experience mm. and made you feel like you aren't crazy for feeling that way and you know like was able to even like say what you're going through in their own words to make you feel like oh oh so you've seen yeah i think that's what a lot of the time we're looking for feeling seen feeling heard feeling validated so Yeah, I think I think it's important for us to learn how to validate each other and also validate ourselves. Because mm-hmm. sometimes it can when someone doesn't understand you start to doubt yourself. You start yeah. to doubt am I is it me losing my mind? Drama? Yeah. Mm. So being able Mind to also like, <laughs> get wrong. <laughs> <Am I? laughs> yeah. yeah, so being also able to in as much as we need external validation, also being able to give yourself mm-hmm. validation for how you feel, whether people will understand you or not. Mm-hmm. your feelings were still there. Yeah. And mm. there's there's a reason they were there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've just thought about like how grace is also important. Mm. Like extending grace to yourself because I see like firstborn daughters like being very like 
hard on themselves because they're like, why did I have to do all of that? So it's really just extending grace to yourself first, even as younger siblings. Because sometimes I feel like I really hurt my sister. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I really had to learn to be graceful with myself and be like, I if I knew, then I wouldn't have put her in like such positions. So first, extending grace to yourself and then to the other person. Because I feel like in sibling dynamics. Um, like say in our friendship, she's a firstborn, like I'm a middle child, but I was last born for like 17 years. So I, wow. I yeah. yeah, I'm naturally inclined to people doing things for me. Naturally. <laughs> yeah. Like, like naturally. why are you not doing things? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, ah, you know, and she's like inclined to like sending me for stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, and expecting me to be perfect. To yeah, yeah. And, and expecting me to do it perfectly. Yeah. You know? So I've learned to extend grace to her where I'm like, hey, I know this is your natural inclination as a first one, but it's okay. We can meet somewhere. We can, we can compromise. compromise. Yeah. yeah. That's very interesting. And I how think can I need to start evaluating yeah. my friendship. <laughs> yeah. Like what? Yeah. First one, okay. Because like, yeah. I'm a middle yeah. child yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 It's funny because when you have these conversations, I think having these conversations and bringing them to the light and setting these boundaries is such a, is like the life hack mm. to maintaining relationships and, and nurturing them and making them even better because like today i want to, when <laughs> Mel, we, when you're going to get your painkiller karibu ni kwambi si niongeze chai yeah i remember we had this conversation yeah. where she's like me spend i really don't I yeah. Yeah. like you say like, I'm, like, i'm not gonna do it yeah. i would have done it if you didn't ask but now that you've asked I'm i don't want to do it, it. Yeah. so i remember and i was like okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so, I don't know you find a healthy compromise because yeah. it doesn't mean that now I have to be so stuck in my ways. Yeah. So just finding a healthy compromise because mm-hmm. it shows up in friendships. It's not even just like with your siblings. Even in your friendships, you'll see like there's always that person who wants to send you mm. and that's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Now everybody's going to be checking their friends. Yeah. I'm like I need yeah. all fast bonds here. And maybe just to close off this conversation because there is a lot of emphasis on fast born daughter or eldest, you know, daughter mm-hmm. syndrome. Middle children and then there's also emphasis on last born yeah. and yeah. how people assume they are what's the word? Like they are spoiled and yeah. ungrateful brats. But I think maybe it's because I'm not privy to this information. Is there something like middle, is there something for mm. the middle kids? They yeah. Actually, it, that, there that is, because mm-hmm. like even when you're doing developmental psych mm-hmm. in school, yeah. one of the one of the topics that we talk widely about is your birth number, mm. like your birth order and how it affects. I'm number three out of four, let's get into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need yeah. to be analyzed. And how it affects like how you show up, mm. um, how you felt, the, the how like just like it's it's really a thing that and it doesn't affect just you in your family setup mm. it affects how you show up even in other re- in other spaces and other yeah. relationships okay. like she said she's very used to having things done for her so even in friendship sometimes she can just be like see me <laughs> fix it yeah <laughs> fix it yeah. yeah so and it's not necessarily a bad thing it can become bad like when you're being overly one thing mm. right but being able to understand how your position your birth number mm-hmm. is affecting how you relate to people and how you you go around life is is like one way to at mm. least be able to because you see when someone tells me you're being too much of a fastborn i could feel bad but now that i know Cause like that day we were going to Diani with oh yeah your yeah. best friends yeah <laughs> <laughs> I saw that dynamic I was seeing because you know uh, Nani is a first oh, born oh Diani I thought yes. you meant oh yeah okay. Diani sorry so sorry. Nani is a first born and the other one is a last born and I was with them in the car oh that's true that's yeah. you, that's when I asked you am I yeah do you I are. do those first born things because yeah. now you see them and you're like oh actually it's yeah. yeah so you see it's like a natural response and we don't really we didn't choose it but mm. we have control over it now that we know and mm-hmm. so we can choose to yeah yeah cuz yeah like um uh, it's called family system theory yeah. so it's basically understanding like birth order and how it plays out so like i get middle child syndrome yeah. so i think i have both mm-hmm. um my last bonus comes in house i know i'm very spoiled like i'm Yeah. As you rightfully should yeah uh, yeah i mean like, uh, i mean yeah mm-hmm. but now when um my brother was born i realized like i, I started feeling unseen mm-hmm. and i think a lot of middle children feel unseen so they're very are we living the same yeah. life <laughs> you, you want to be seen you become yeah. very like aggressive in your goals because you're like eh please see me yeah. you know because the last one is spoiled 
And then the first one is always like the one who's like deputy parent and everything. So attention goes to those. Mm. But now being a middle child kind of makes you just please see me. Yeah. yeah. Right? And then now in relationships and friendships, it can now become almost like people pleasing. It can become like doing too much. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 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 Interestingly, you I was feel, actually listening yeah. to a podcast today morning about people pleasing. Mm. Yeah. Well, damn. Yeah. Proceed. Mm-hmm. So you feel like you need to overdo and you need to like overplay the role that you play in people's lives. And like even if um like someone isn't talking to you, like let me do something. So oh that. my so god. Yeah. Like, yeah. I Does she do know something. me? <laughs> 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 if you don't, then you don't exist. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't exactly. make yourself seen, then you don't exist. Exactly. And then you rely so much on external validation. Oh my god. Like, like, just, <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's really important to check yourself and ask like, why am I doing this? Am I yeah. doing this so that someone can validate me and show me that I'm enough and show me that, yay, yeah, you're doing something. I see you. And learn to validate yourself. Yeah. It's okay, in, yeah. when they yeah. hear you. Yeah. <laughs> That's so um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just learn to validate yourself. Yeah. But I think also being a middle child, I think middle children are like really successful also. I mean, no, like no, the, with all no, these things, true. Actually, with every like bad thing you've gone through, there's always something good about it. Yeah. So even with being a middle child, like with you being very aggressive and wanting to do things, like you end up being quite successful because you're like, yeah, I must be seen. So there's yeah. it's almost for me even with attachment style. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Like if you're avoidant, you're probably very good with setting boundaries. Exactly. Mm-hmm. If you're anxious, you're probably very empathetic and mm-hmm. emotionally attuned to how oh, other people yeah. I have not felt worse <laughs> thing either. I feel like I have been analyzed the yeah. situation, the situation was for you they were talking about Stephanie Naya just in case uh, <laughs> so chill number <laughs> interesting yeah. Yeah. wow everything the two of you have said anxious attachment middle child ex, I mean this especially when you say the the, the in the context of wanting to overdo, I have been in so many, ins- it's like me throwing myself under the bus, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I overcompensate, mm. I over apologize, which is probably why I want you to understand. Mm. Why are you not? Because you feel unseen. It's mm. like you're invisible. You're not being heard. Mm. You're not, you're like, you don't exist. You're not being validated That's for crazy. your experiences. Yeah, but then you're also not seeing yourself. Like you're literally mm. not seeing yourself. So it starts with actually like seeing yourself and yeah. like really validating yourself of like Wendy said. Mm. I have mm. a lot of inner work to do. <laughs> yeah. This video yeah. has proved anything. Okay, so thank you so much for coming over to the SNS and especially asking for a friend and for sharing your insights. I've been taking so many notes. I think I'm now, after this, I'm just going to be analyzing everything. And, I, and I'm always curious, how do you guys not analyze every single thing because for me i'd be like yeah that's just someone would be mm. talking to me and i'm like mm-hmm, avoidant i see it yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. um i think i think we unintentionally analyze a lot of things but yeah. at the same time sometimes it gets so tiring so you switch mm. off your therapist's brain yeah mm. yeah which is why i was asking prior when we were having a conversation where do you draw the line yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. there's times like our brains are tired like we literally even tell ourselves like okay let's just be dumb because mm. yeah. you can be on high alert you're constantly just like trying to analyze everything that you forget to be present so we have to like check each other and just be like hey no like can we just be present can we just have yeah. yeah. you know, yeah. that because sometimes you're not even feeling your emotions you're just so ready to analyze and see what it's teaching and yeah. it's like can we just feel it yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. and i was also gonna say how um sometimes even with that you know self-awareness of and awareness of all these things that happen mm-hmm. and understanding human behavior um Sometimes we need to relax even mm-hmm. when even now as just other people not necessarily like a therapist or anything and mm-hmm. you're going through this space where you're being self-aware you can be too self-aware to the mm. point that first of all you become anxious you're mm. always judging and thinking oh my god oh my god i shouldn't have a, you forget to give yourself space to just be a human being yeah mm. so yeah i think we we try to intentionally give ourselves like a break to be human and that's why when you see us at the club and you see this is that therapist from Instagram don't talk to please us. don't talk to us about your problem <laughs> yeah um, okay, <laughs> just say yeah. hi okay. yeah. just say hi we are, we are we 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 do this a lot and it sometimes it can be really annoying annoying mm. yeah. and yeah 
we need a break you know the same way you don't want to talk shop when you're out yeah. mm-hmm. same for us yeah. so yeah okay you can tell us where we can find you either on socials websites how do we access your services etc um so instagram melissa kyoko what's my tiktok name eh? <laughs> I think it's like Mel it. Kyoko yeah. <laughs> or Melissa Kyoko. Everything is just Melissa Kyoko. Mm-hmm. Um, my website is still under construction. Mm-hmm. I love you so much. She's the one making it. She's taking so long. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But to book for a session, it's Melissa Kyoko Therapy at gmail dot com. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For me, um, Instagram is Wendy dot Madeka. Mm-hmm. TikTok, there's no dot. It's just Wendy Madeka. Mm-hmm. Um, website Wendy Madeka dot com. What else? What else? Is it Gmail? Uh, yes, oh, yeah. talk to yeah. at gmail.com. But usually, mm, just website. use my website, yeah. please. Mm-hmm. I'll, if you want to send me a message from my website, I'll still be able to receive it mm-hmm. on my email and um, respond. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. So you can book a consultation call on my website or whatever. Mm-hmm. Then we can start from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Asking for a Friend. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment down below and join our family. That's it from us and we'll see you in the next time. Bye. Bye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>